Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Coming to you live from the Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida. This is the 2022 U.S. Amateur. I'm Jeremy Jones with the APA. And we have a second round winner side match, I believe, about to start. Daniel Gamble and Jose Del Rio. Jose, as uh, nobody knows these tables better, the owner of Strokers. You can see Daniel Gamble from Hickory, North Carolina. So that's the second player I know from Hickory, big time pool town right outside of Charlotte. Him and Jeff Abernathy, another really, really fine player from that area. See the tournament formats, race to seven, combination of eight and nine ball. Five games of eight ball max, at eight, uh, max eight games of nine ball. Double elimination format until the finals where we'll have an extended race. And the winner of the lag chooses either the break or the format. And the format meaning which game they want to choose, eight ball or nine. So it looks like Del Rio Jose to break first here in the eight ball. One thing you'll notice about Daniel that I saw last night when he was practicing, maybe the longest queue in pool. I think he told me it was 69 inches long. He's a tall man, so it kind of makes a little more sense, but that's a that's a lot of cue stick right there. Now from the side rail with the second second ball break. Now these are the, what we talked about in the last match. Uh, when you break from the side rail, you don't make one. You feel like you're going to leave a tougher layout. opening shot there. I don't think he wants to is he sizing up the bank maybe on the 15 for later. I thought I thought maybe if he can get the 11 cleared away he could get an angle on the 12 to go you know kind of in between the nine and was that the five ball that's next to the four go into the seven maybe and open up the 15 a little bit. got a shot on anything besides the 10. Maybe if he can get at the 15 in the side, we'll see in a moment. Okay. That's a pretty smart shot. Um, he's gotten all the stripes open now. And sometimes you have to play pretty creative safeties in eight ball, meaning you know you're not going to snooker the guy, but you have to really just leave him off the shot. Now, one thing that Jose has a... Uh, it can be pretty comfortable coming off the seven, coming down to the end rail. He can block pretty much all the balls, I think. That meaning all the stripes. I think he just wants to play to the in rail speed. I don't think anything crazy. And kind of keeping the seven covered up, keeping him off the 13, 10, and 15 up the table. So. We've seen most of the leads hold up here. We've had some hill hill matches and some that went neck and neck. But when you get a two, three, four game lead, it seems like. It's been hard to overcome here early in the tournament. Usually we see some of those amazing comebacks right here at Strokers. 
number one last year in the final from Jason Shearman and one that many won't forget for a long time. Okay, is he going to really get him behind the 15 here? Wow. Pretty good effort. Nice. Done okay, though. I mean, that combo on the side rail, 13 10, it looks like very playable. So Jose's got to go a lot of places here to get completely safe. I'm not sure he's queuing at this, like maybe shooting the cross side. Oh, no, he's just playing the safety, I think. He's going to leave a gap at that combo I was talking about, I think, anyways. thing is not about the combo. What he's thinking about is that nine ball. Really the ball that's concerning. No, no reason to pocket more balls if you can't get at the nine. May just roll on this ball kind of. I was going to say maybe lay it over the pocket. Now he's opened up the seven for the corner now that the, that combo's gone. So the seven does go all the way up by the ten. Of course, he's not shooting at that now. But and Jose's got a little freedom with that tough nine ball. So he could roll at the six a little bit. I don't think he wants to shoot the one, going away from everything a little bit, and has to go a long ways. You know. I'm, Amidst a bunch of traffic, that being the 15, 13, and 10 up the table. So I think he leaves the one. I like just rolling the six. You're going to leave a shot if you miss it. But like I said, he's got a little bit of freedom knowing now he tried to come back over. That's fine. Trying to keep him off the shot if he did miss. The thing is about that shot is say he makes it, right? Those other balls were tied up. Like, what's he going to shoot next? And Daniel really needs to bring one of these stripes near the nine. I think that's about, besides taking on a bank of some sort, if he happens to get that. You know, a lot of times when you got a problem, you need another ball near it to really solve that problem. I've had some of these games today. Lots of safeties. Taking on the four ball. Makes that. He can use the five. Uh, nice aggressive stroke there. Now he can use the five to tear the balls open, that being the six, seven. And once he pocketed that ball right there, I think that's the way he's going to go with it. Now, the thing is, the two balls are there. That should help slow the cue ball down. It could continue to travel through. Yeah, and that's kind of what happens sometimes. I don't know if he got a shot at the three or not. Maybe the seven in the corner? Yeah, I think the seven in the corner does go. Now he'll need to check to see if the six passes the nine. The six does go in the upper corner. But after he pockets this seven, maybe a draw stroke to stay behind the six here. get close to the ball sometimes it's hard to find the line <laughs> all 
All right, Ted stopped it. So he, from his measurement before, he should have a shot at eight in the side. Can't take your eye off this one anytime you're on the rail. I wouldn't say you lose accuracy. It just seems like it's a little more missable. Nice confident stroke from Daniel, and he'll break the balls here in game number two. Side rail break from the other side. Second ball most likely. Took a little off. Got the corner ball down. Unfortunate kiss on the cue ball there. So we'll see Mr. Del Rio with ball in hand behind the line. Trailing one to zero trying to tie the score. Getting into this stripe mildly that's attached to the to the solid there just past the side. Okay. He's got the stripe just below the the eight. Eh, everything looks pretty good here. I would probably probably let's see. Probably want to take care of everything but the two balls near the side pocket over here. I think anyways, let's look at the out. And of course, it's hard to tell all the angles. I think I might draw into the 10 here. He's going to go forward for the other stripe. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Now he'll just have to move the cue ball a little bit into space. Where I thought maybe if he draws into the 8 right there, he pockets the 14, then the 12, then comes up to the 15 in the corner. And has a 9 and 11 last. So now he's going to have to work the ball into those small position areas, whether that be two rails draw. Now the good thing is he's got options if he misses position here. All right, that speed's going to be okay. He's going to be a little thinner on the 14 than he wanted, and he didn't quite get there on the 9, so he's going to have to change plans a little bit. Maybe kill this ball with a little inside, that being the 14, and take a a long shot on the 15 up the table. Yeah, this angle's going away from him a little bit. Now the thing is, if you need to shoot this 14, is it? And then get on the 9-11 and, and, and play position on the 15 last, it's not ideal, but there is enough space to do so. So don't feel like you got to press to get on the 15 right now. You don't have to. That'd be a little thick to the pocket. All right, so it should be the one here getting on the five. You want to clear that 
that five quickly so you don't have to wait to open the two ball. Nothing major, just a little low left here. Coming at the five. And you'll come across for the six. Just one rail cross. You may be able to kill the ball here. But just go where it wants to go. It wants to go one rail between the six, seven, it looks like. Yeah, like that. You've got so many options from here. Should be just fine. I'd probably hit a little left English here coming up on the side rail for the two or the three in the side. Two in the corner or the three. I don't come backwards myself. I like top and side here. All right, that's not going to hurt, though. Maybe that angle fooled me. He really held the ball easily, so just follow for the two. I'm pretty sure I've seen Daniel play in this event before, if I'm not mistaken. Now I'd like to get a little information if we could. And something's telling me, was it Gamble that made a deep run last year in this? Uh, was it him that played Shearman in the final? I keep looking at him, and something's reminding me about that. Maybe we'll get a little information from our online EPA players. Could be way off, but definitely have seen him play before. And the more I watch him play, the more it makes me think that he was one of the guys that made a deep run in this tournament last year. All right, going away from the second ball break, more head on break. So it should get a good spread if he gets a good connection here. Oh, pretty good. Now, nothing down as of yet. Watch out, eight ball. That eight ball is going to complicate a few things. Now Daniel Gamble at 2-0. Is that's going to be a little heavy. He's trying to get on the four. Yeah, he wanted to get on the four to where he could come to the backside of the two and kick it away. You can see the eights keeping uh, the two ball pretty hemmed up. Now, there is a short side on the two. I, well, maybe not. Maybe there isn't a pocket short side. Kind of thought maybe it slid by that 12, but now that I look at it more, maybe not. Trying to get on that four again. And he wants the angle to come, I think, two rails to bump the seven. Now, the thing is, to get that second rail, you got to go right by the eight. I mean, it's going to be close. Now, one rail, the problem with one rail, it may not bump the ball into too good of a position. So two rails is a lot better as far as getting it opened up. I don't think he wants to contact the eight, just the two here. And he... Went right by it, maybe even lost the cue ball here in the corner. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Didn't expect that. I think he hit the ball kind of how he wanted, just barely missed it. Had to put a little speed on it because he couldn't just barely bump the two. He needed to bump it away, you know, a good foot or so. And ball in hand helps this run out tremendously. He can either go this stripe right here. He's going to shoot in the side. Of course, he'll want to attack on the 13 for the opposite corner. But also, he's got to take care of the 12 up by the 6. I probably get to the 12 next myself. He went over, ran that one. So he's going to have to float this ball in. Now, he's a tall man, so the long cue. So I think maybe he can do it and get around the back side of the 2 for the 12 up long. And he's got to take this shot on, I think. 
It's going to require some right spin to slow the cue ball down. He can hit the 13, is it, a little heavier that way. I think he can hold it. Well, this ain't no spin hardly on there. So he's going into the 12 maybe. All right, pretty good. Pretty good. Still got a few balls to contend with. Felt confident the one rail for the short side on the 12 is not bad with just a hair of English, just a hair of right. Main thing is don't let up on it too much. Okay, he's trying to hold the ball. Well, you gotta remember, you gotta figure out that route to get to the back of the 12. That was one opportunity to do it. Now he's gonna run the cue ball. Got the nine and the 10, so. Uh, just a little overrun, but still pretty good. He'd love to have been straight on the nine. I believe that's the nine. Yeah, he'd love to have been straight on the nine to just stop. And then he could draw for the 10 over behind the 12 very naturally. Yeah. Trying to stun one rail behind the 12, that's dangerous. I'd have to try and use the 14, I think. And he got there, whether it bumps the two or not, he got there. Daniel Gamble doing whatever it takes to get out here early in this match. Just got to pinch this a little bit, a little draw stroke, no big deal. I don't like stunning above this. I like pinching this ball, drawing back behind the 14 for the 14 in the side. A lot harder, you know, the, the pinch on it, the draw kind of slows the ball down where you can really control it. If you try to go forward here with a stun, difficult. Oh, he's trying to come to this side of it. Nah, he hung the ball. I think I have to keep it simple here. If the seven goes, I got to shoot the seven, then just get on the six to pocket that stripe and play a safety on the 14. So shoot the seven, come get close to the six to where you can shoot the six into the 12, make the 12 and get the cue ball safe on the 14. I think if he tries to press this and really get out somehow, manufacture a run out, I think he could get away from him. This is tough as far as trying to get out. And this is where you got to take advantage of your situation. The situation says you have a big advantage. And, uh, and it kind of wears on your opponent when you take it, uh, you know, clear advantage of that. So like I said, I think just uh, pocket the seven, come down, get the combination on the six, 12, and then there's always overcut it a little bit. Now he's going to protect the cue ball a little bit as far as, or excuse me, protect the eight ball a little bit, but. Yeah, he's got to leave the 12, I think. I think he's got to cut the 14 onto the seven as much as he can. I think that's about all he has. Well, and he's going to look at a high ball. So what he's thinking is with a high ball, I can re reposition the eight maybe. like this shot. Wow. Try that again. 
So now he's going to have to try to get to the end rail. Now the reason why the end rail is so good is you may not get the bank, but you can come off the eight and pocket the seven and probably play a real nasty safety uh, against Jose here, using the eight as a full eclipse on all three of those solids that would be left. Now, if you could get to the end rail, the bank shot is probably playable as well. And you got to smooth this or it's going to hook. If you hit it hard, it's going to hook. And it ain't going to get down here. He hit it pretty sweet. And he may have gotten perfect to play the safety I was talking about right here. I wonder if he doesn't recognize this, just bumping the eight and making the seven and making Jose come with one heck of a shot with the eight over the pocket. Yeah, you just got to hit it super light. The eight shouldn't come out too much, I don't think, to where it gives up the six. You're going to only give up maybe an edge on the two. And if Jose makes a great shot, he makes a great shot. But I'd be super happy the situation to be able to play this safety right here. Yeah, just like that. And that's a great play. Very smart, full eclipse on, with the eight on all three of these solids. like to try and kick thinking oh man I may be able to get safe but I think he's got to try and try and fluke a ball in here make a ball somehow oh, no love so far for the owner here at Strokers Jose Del Rio it's going to be game three there and a 3-0 lead for Daniel Gamble so the eight ball working out for Daniel so far Changing the break again. So back to the second ball break here for Daniel. Yeah, balls not quite open as well as I normally see him, and quite a few difficult situations already. I may be able to shoot the two and do something into the 11 to open the four, but no guarantees there. looking at I think now I don't know if he can draw off the two and miss the 11 and get into the nine or the 12 rather I'm sorry I think maybe he has to use the 11 to open the balls up we'll see 
Yeah, like that. And he was trying to make the four move, and really that was a good shot, I think. I mean, gave him a chance, right? Okay, he's got a six ball and a one ball. He can play. The three's got those other two solids kind of covered up. If he knocks this in, he could hold for the one. Is he drawn into this four? Oh, no. Well, it hadn't been much luck for Jose. You know, in eight ball, you definitely have to take some chances sometimes trying to produce some results. And, you know, that's just uh, pretty unfortunate to hit that ball that well, get into the four and draw off of that. Um, so he's going to play this ball on the side and lightly open those two stripes, but pretty unlucky to draw off of that pink four and, and scratch. Definitely trying was trying to get into the four ball. So well, good thing the 14 hung up. I'm not sure he has another shot, really. He's in a good spot, though. That's for sure. Might play the nine up long last uh, to get on the eight. We'll see. I don't think I would take on one of those stripes. Yeah, I want to free up the cue ball a little bit before I shoot one of those. those. Now, the thing is, the 10 goes in the other corner, too. You don't have to shoot the 10 next. You can shoot the... F oh, my. I can't believe he's shooting this. This makes a missable ball. I don't understand this shot. But, like, again, these guys are at the table. Yeah. That's pressing right there. That's a little worry. And now he may have gotten away with it to an extent. I don't know if he really gave him that great of a shot besides a thin cut on the seven in the side. So, surprised Daniel didn't pocket the 12 cross side there, and then you can cue the ball pretty easily for the 15, and the 10 went in the opposite corner as well. Sometimes it's easy to get kind of fixated on that first ball you want to shoot. Pretty smart shot from Jose. I think I might go the end rail here off something. Uh, the one doesn't pass the nine. The seven's not playable. The four five's covered up. And the three's a tough cut shot. So I think I try to get to the end rail here if I'm Daniel somehow simply. Maybe just shave off the ten a little bit and just go right down to the middle of the end rail. I don't really, I mean, the seven goes in the corner, but that's an awfully tough shot. And maybe he can't dodge a scratch, that being Jose. So. That's good camera view there. Now, leaving him on the short side of things is a lot more trouble than up the table, I think. Unless the seven's full of me and it's cuttable on the side, but. You know, he could even get below the one a little bit, right? I mean, just go up above the one. Just shave the 10 and go up to the first diamond, you know, just on the top rail behind the one. That's a safe, safe place. So just make sure you get a rail with the cue ball. Not sure the 10 is going to get a cushion. Looks like about a third ball hit maybe. Fourth ball hit, quarter ball hit. He's a little worried about where the ten's going. I wouldn't worry about that too much. You just gotta. You're not gonna be hitting the ten very hard, so it's not gonna move the three a bunch if it moves it at all. Well, now 
he's looking at something else, I think. Is he going up? Oh, okay. Trying to get down there. And look how good this turned out. <laughs> 15 covered up the one a little bit. I don't think the seven's shootable. It is shootable in the corner, but super tough shot. So a lot of movement, but Daniel's got to like that outcome. I'm trying to think where Jose might go as a safety here. Uh, maybe only can leave him a tester a little bit here. He could shave off the right side of the one, go the side rail, and then all the way down to the end rail behind the 4-5. Now, you're going to leave a long 15 ball, but actually the one may get in the way of that if you cut it to the left a little bit. So he's desperately trying to get behind the 4-5 somewhere. Now he's elevating on the 7. I uh, don't think it goes in the side. Uh, great effort. Great effort there, Jose. It was just a super tough shot. So now elevated, pocketing the 9, really wins the rack. Should be the 9, 12, 10, 15 last. Yeah. And this is where the long frame, if you understand it, really helps. You don't have to swing very hard to stop your ball. It really opens the pocket up quite a bit. So, Jose Del Rio, real first chance to get on the board. Been a lot of unfortunate things so far and not a whole lot of love in this match, but now they're open. He's got to play some nice position shots with the 4-5, but... Okay, gotten on the three. Thought he might have wanted to get on the four or the five right there. Well, the one good thing is the five is playable in the lower right, but you got to play it with some angle. So you're going to be working the cue ball a little bit. And he's got to kind of go past the 12 to get there off the three if he's going to do it now. You know, he could bank the five away and just squeeze him in between the four and nine. Probably going to be fine on a safety with so many solids open around the table. But I know he wants to try and run out. I don't blame him. Yeah, that's what he's doing, playing the safety, trying to just hold him up on the 4-9. Yeah, just like that. Doesn't want to pocket anything. I'm not sure what, does he have a bank cross side on the 9? Is there any possibility of that? Good angle there, good camera angle. It is doable. Could just sliver the nine and come down to the bottom rail here, really trying to, you know, leave Jose a tester, right? So just get below the three. The nine should still cover up the four. And what he's trying to do is get below the three to where the three covers up everything else. And he's giving up the one maybe. I don't know, maybe not. The ten's there. May have gotten in the perfect little spot. So a lot of tactical here in game number four. Now Jose can shave the three and drop down below, but can he keep him off of everything? I don't think so. Going to be a 10 ball, 15 he might cut from distance, 9 ball he may cut up the table. Even a 12 ball he might get a shot on, so we'll see.
down. Even though you're down three to zero, you know. One one of these kind of games where you had to battle a lot can go a long ways. Get to break the balls there in the next game. I don't think he's going to give up any kind of free shot either. So <clears throat> even though his balls are kind of still a little out, of, not I wouldn't say out of play, of course, but there's some places that Daniel can go with the cue ball to make it tough on Jose. So now Jose's looking at something else. He's looking at taking on the five, I guess. Got to use a little of the rail. Oh, sweet hit there. And really tough to pull the trigger on a shot like that after you've played so many touchy little safeties. So he's lined up now, just wants a four. Then he can draw back between the 9-10 or he can go forward past the nine for the three. You know, when he's playing. This camera angle tells me he's got a little angle. Oh, he's hitting a little higher on the cue ball, so maybe coming two rails here with stun. Made some nice shots here. I'd like to just get to that side pocket if I could and cut the eight. That would be awesome. Is he drawing this now? Better gotta watch it. If he cheats the pocket a little bit, could go right into the nine with the cue ball. Oh, side pocket. Oh, my. Yeah, unfortunate. And just pulls so brutal. It just doesn't take much to make things so much more difficult, right? So. Should be 15 next. No reason to draw the ball up the rail. Yeah, you want to come across there. When they're like this, no reason to get any kind of missable. And sometimes, like we talked about in the last set, that first game and the last one is like pulling teeth to get on the board sometimes. And now... For a 4 0 lead. Daniel Gamble doing a lot of what he did last year. Yeah, I don't think I would go off. Okay, tough situation here. I 
think he's got to take a long shot on a, on the 11 ball, right? Because he's made, let's see. He's just made stripes here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's right. So he's just made stripes, and he's going to have to just shoot the 11. Try and not, not peel the 9 off just yet, but shoot the 11. Get on the, the 14 if he could to where he could make the four ball, maybe cover up the pocket there. Now there's a cross side bank on the 14, looks maybe doable. I don't know, the two looks like it might have him. Not sure what he's looking at here. Looking to rearrange some balls. Can you get up table with the cue ball? That's maybe what I would do. I don't know. <laughs> Definitely rearranged a few balls, that's for sure. Now Jose's got all kinds to shoot at. It looks like maybe the eight goes by the nine, but the one's up table. He can come across. Doesn't have that corner. Okay, I don't know if he wanted to do that exactly. He's got the two on the sides, so okay. But I think he wanted to get the three away right then, but that's all right. A lot of clearance here on this rack, so. Kind of like most eight ball games when they're laying like this, just mainly no miss. And that's the goal. Yeah, the more I look at that eight ball, it makes me think it doesn't go. So he's got to be a little, you know, detailed here getting on this five ball. That way he gets on the one correctly to get across for the eight, I think. I uh, doesn't want to get jacked up. A little funny cueing can make problems. He stopped well short of it, but he's going to be over the nine a bit. Following this ball now? Looks like I thought he would draw this ball. They followed it. Watch out, 14. This could be issues here. Yeah, and he just caught the ball hair thick to the pocket. I think that's why the 14 got involved. I think if he hits it a little more center pocket like he expected, I think he goes two rails and doesn't really bump the 14. And now, in a world of hurt, not only this game, but down 4 to 0. I think he's got something. Sometimes you've got to come with a shot to, to start getting, you know, things going your way. Now, it'll be interesting to see if he doesn't have the eight in the side. Does he take the jump on in the side or the cut in the corner? Oh, he hit that ball well. He didn't even overhit it at all. He it real clean with the jump cue. I think he does have the eight in the corner. I mean, 
for me, I would have to level out and shoot that myself before jumping the side, I think. Especially because there is some cut on the side. You know, you're probably going to take away the worst of it, but you could hang in the eight in the corner and make things very difficult on your opponent because you're not going to fire that, that eight ball there in the, in the corner. It's going to be a rolling ball. Let's see if he can knock another one in. Oh, sweet shot. Way to earn it, Jose. Well, that'll end our session as far as the eight ball is concerned. Now moving on to the, to the nine ball. see all you can do there the APA their Facebook profile and all the information you can get about what you need to know with the APA subscribe get that APA buzz so Jose the eight ball wasn't so kind but he battled for that last game a little nine ball going. Looks to sound like a pretty solid hit on the one. Nothing down, I don't think. So thin cut on the one here for Daniel, but he, eh, maybe too thin actually. We'll see if he plays the safety or goes for the shot. A little more automatic position, I think he probably cuts it in, but. Uh, pretty smart shot there. Trying to pocket this or cut it some kind of way, maybe get separation. Right, got underneath it. That's going to hold Daniel off the offensive shot, I think. He can bank the one across. He needs to hit this heavy if he wants to go into the four with the cue ball here and use the six. Oh, he went the other way off the top side of it. So there's some gaps there. I think got behind the two. Nice shot. Well, Jose's two, two for two with the short cue. Well, it looked like two for three for three as well, but just rattled the pocket. He can cut at the one, run the cue ball off the six a little bit, maybe off the four a little bit. He can bank the one away and try to hold the cue ball behind those two balls. All right, looks like he's going to take the cut on. 
Should come down on one side or the other, the two, I think, being okay, as long as the speed's okay. Now, a little heavy. Could chip the two, go up by the six if he wanted. Yeah, like that. Caught it a little thick is all, really trying to move the two ball. Still good control with the cue ball. Left a hair of a look at the, at the two. Jose maybe banks this kind of back towards where the cue ball's at now and goes one rail behind the three with the cue ball, lays pretty natural. Just to mildly bank it back towards the seven ish. And then go behind the three with the cue ball. Now he's hit this a little hard. So he's going to need a little luck. He got a little bit, but cue ball got away from him, but the two held up okay. Might have fluked this two ball in here and watch out for the nine. Oh my. I don't know if the five's in the way or not. We'll we'll get a different camera angle to get a look at it, but he almost lined up a kiss shot on the nine, but I don't think he can get to the good side of the of the uh of the three. And the kiss shot's lined up nicely, but again he can't really get to the good side of the three. He has to play the safety, I think. Now, that wasn't a snooker, but overall, I've been super impressed with the players here the last three days. Um, with the type of safeties, the routes they went, the you know decisions, they've all been really solid for the most part. Like your, you know, these players, just like the pros, they got their pool instincts on what to do. Kind of like a little gut instinct. Nice to have the cue ball on the rail here. It's hard to go past the side off the left side of the three, which is the easier side to play safe. And he's just trying to play a good speed and like the one last time, just a little heavy. Now we'll see. Daniel wants to gamble a little bit. I know that's the name, the last name gamble, but. He can cut this three in and go into the six to hold the cue ball, I think. Uh, uh, that looks a little thin, maybe. This is doable, though. And this first game of nine ball, I think, is going to be a huge one. Uh, Jose gets this one on, on the board, four to two. After six games, you expect four to two. It's hard to go game for game and be three apiece. So what seems like a lot of Daniel Gamble early in this set could easily be back to a pretty competitive match after game number six. We'll see what happens. Now he could overcut the three on the left side, kind of cut it between the seven, six, let it hit the right side rail and bounce out and run the cue ball two rails behind the nine. There's a lot of room for error with that. It's all about your speed control. Be a little hot with the cue ball, but I know he was super concerned about getting the three away from the pocket. So and what'll happen there is you learn to use a little left spin there to throw the three a little bit, and that that'll slow the cue ball down.
Oh, nice hit there. He's going to get behind the nine, I think, or near it. Up on the five, maybe. Left a nice, I think, two rail kick uh, at the three to get behind it and come across it off one rail. But I think he can go to the left long rail here. Get at the three. All right, trying to come across it. Oh, he caught the double kiss. And I think he's giving up a three six. It's close. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's real close to where he can, if the four's not got him cut off, to get at the three correctly to make the six. That's super close. I think with a little right spin, he can throw the three towards the six. Not comfortable with any manner to shoot it. Doesn't seem like anyways. Love to level out like this. And he's doing this because he can add a little right English and throw the three a little more is I think why. Okay, good shot. Is the cue ball going to agree? I think he's okay. Oh, maybe not. Just barely got him now. This is one he should make with the jump cue if he's going to shoot it. Now, he doesn't have to shoot it. I think he's got enough of the three to maybe bank the three up the side rail and get the cue ball behind the four, but hard not to shoot at this jump shot. And I certainly don't want to bet against him. Well, going back to his regular cue. So does that mean he's going to play the safety? Does that mean he's going to play the swerve shot? Wow. Must really like the swerve after making two jump shots earlier. Beauty. Okay, so speed control here can make this a missable ball. Because you do have a lot of angle. And you don't want to go past the five, so. Yeah. And what I mean by that is you notice the speed was real good, right? So on the five, but what happens is you cheat the, try to cheat the, the cut a little bit trying to help the cue ball speed whether to slow it down or speed it up so very easy to think you're still making the ball but a little bit off very common draw stroke here that's got to go a little bit okay so now he's gonna have to stun around the t nine uh coming two rails across the eight so you got to make a clear-cut decision where he's going with the cue ball here. This is funny. You got to get by that nine, like I said. And then you have to have good speed control to either fall short of the eight to cut the seven or go past the eight to cut the seven and not go too far. And, of course, not end up behind the eight. Oh, the high ball is going to hit the nine, isn't it? Okay, he stunned it. He might bump the eight. We'll see. Okay, he had it perfect. What speed control there from Daniel?
kind of stunned it with a little higher tip position, so it kind of ran out longer. Interesting shot, and really a nice way to play it. Okay, just keeping it simple for the eight in the corner. Trying to get on five games here. Ooh, okay, top part of the pocket a little bit. Scared me. And now five to one for Daniel. A dry break by Daniel here. Good shot on the one. The two's near. The three's near the two. Now the real work, of course, you can see a, an eight ball that's funny by the side, but the real work is getting from the three to the four back to the five. Good thing is these first few set up nicely to be pretty accurate on the three to get that uh, that little bit of work started, right? So. He's got to come across here. He's got to gain a little bit of an angle. Ooh, this is starting to look a little straightish. Yeah, so now he's going to have to work the ball. And uh, Jose's got a powerful stroke. He can move the ball. But anytime you have to put a little more power into it, your touch goes away a little bit coming down the table. So easy to maybe get on the rail on the four, making it tough to get on the five. And that's where it kind of out of line starts a little bit whenever you have to start powering the ball a little. So we'll see how well he, you know, maps this. Okay, and this is what I was talking about a little bit. Now he's going to get off the rail, which is good, and a little bit of an angle. So pretty nice. But you could see there was a, a chance of getting straightish on the rail there, and that would have been tough to get on the five. And that's not just for all these really great playing amateurs but just any any player pro or not again the same type of shot need to have some pretty decent speed coming down the table smart shot just coming one rail very hard to fall straight in on the rail that way Oh, that's an unexpected miss there. So we'll see what Daniel wants to do to try and get on the hill here. He's got a cross side bank that lays okay. Not the best one, but it's not terrible. I wonder if the six goes in the side by the eight, because if you take this bank on, you might want to run the ball past the six a little bit. You don't want to, like, float the bank too much. I wouldn't anyways. Oh, that's a good camera angle. The six does go on the side past the eight. So you may run the ball three rails here for a little cut on the six. We'll see. I 
he's overcut it a bit. He's overcut it a bit. Jose's going to be in a good position now. Didn't expect that either. Got a little steep on the six. I know he wanted an angle on the six, but maybe not that much. So we'll see. Daniel's got a swerve shot between the six eight that a lot of people feel pretty comfortable, believe it or not. And then you got the jump shot as well. The kick's a little above the pocket and the seven's in the way. Just a little bit anyway. So I think it's going to be the swerve or the jump we see. Now he's got to carry it a little ways to get over the eight. And the five stuck on the rail, so he could actually, if he hit the right side of this five, maybe overcut it and not make it. If he hits the five, though, pretty hard not to make it. Oh, really solid hit, actually. And he's got a little bit of a look at the six. Don't know. Can he play a... The safety behind the eight, maybe. Does he have enough of the six to maybe play a combo on the nine? I hate to jump this ball into that small, shallow side pocket right there. I think I'd rather jump at the combo, trying to bring the cue ball backwards a little bit, maybe. I don't think he has to go over a ton of the seven, so he, I don't think hitting it hard is a problem, like he's going to go off the table with the cue ball if he tries to cut the six at the nine. He can kick at this as well. It doesn't have to jump at all. I think this is the shot I like to jump in on the combo. Try and dig on the ball a little bit. Hopefully, you're hoping the cue ball comes back a little bit, but you know, if you hit the numbers, you make the combo. I think that's your good percentage play here. I mean, nothing's great, obviously, but he's not really drawing it. He's just hitting a flat ball, so coming back, really not going to happen, I don't think. Good effort, though. Got the cue ball over on the rail. Gonna leave a shot, but nothing easy. I mean, this is not easy right here. This is a shot Jose's supposed to make, of course, but <clears throat> nothing easy at all. And it's not the type of shot you want to ease in. So being on the rail, you gotta put a little speed into this. Doesn't need any side spin, just straight high ball. Nice shot. Super nice shot.
He's got an angle to come one rail above, it looks like. Maybe he has to draw it, I don't know. Did it fall a little funny? Is the one rail top English angle not there with a little high right? I thought it was, but... Yeah, nice shot. Jose's going to get back on the board at 5-2, to two, it looks like, and breaking the balls in this race to seven. It's all nine ball left in this match. Daniel Gamble out 5-1, to 5-2 to two now, excuse me. Daniel of Hickory, North Carolina. Jose, the owner here at Strokers Billiards here in Palm Harbor, Florida. You know, we've had a lot of dry breaks. Um, you know, we've had a lot. Um, some were, you know, the guys have made three and four. Just amazing how it changes. Doesn't take much. Might need a little rail first here, right? Oh, nice shot he got for the two in that corner. Now, does he need to roll this in, maybe? Can he draw back for short side? If he rolled forward, he can certainly cut the three in. Daniel, like Jose, very capable player, that's for sure. And a runner up here last year to Jeremy Sherman. Or excuse me, Jeremy Jason Sherman. Wasn't so convinced when it left, but it did get down. I saw a very concerned look on his face when that two left the cue ball. Now, the five's cuttable, right? So, position on the four is where you've got to keep it simple. The five, you just get past the eight a hair. You don't have to get all the way down table. You can just get a little past the eight. You're going to be okay. Now, I don't think I stunned this. Or I might even roll forward above the eight in between the six and eight here. A lot of times if you want to get better at pool, it's about what's necessary, not necessarily what you want. Like right here, five, like I said, the five is pretty cuttable, and you want to get back down table for the six. So if this is any kind of tight, stunning the ball makes the pocket a little bit bigger. I mean, a little bit smaller. Ooh, watch out, cue ball. Okay. That's fine. A little short of his mark, but you can always work the cue ball a little bit. I wouldn't go with a high ball myself. I would draw this. Yeah, just like that. It's going to get a nice, friendly bounce. Good shape on the nine, and... Gamble's going to get to the hill here. And again, these leads, so far at least, have held up, not only in the ladies' division, but also here in the open. Now 6-2 to two after a dry break, so a nice run there by Daniel.
right, here we go. Love to end it with a break and run, right? That would that would be sweet. It's always a good feeling, and he's gonna get a starter anyways. He's awfully straight on the one. So Daniel, of course, big long guy, right? Got got some power in that stroke when he needs it, but this one's awfully tough to work the cue ball all the way for the two. May set up for the bank here myself. Or maybe play the safety on the two behind the eight with the cue ball, let the two just come over by the three, something like that, yeah. He gets on that good line. Now the thing about the bank is you you know, you either play with angle to move the ball or you want to play real straight to hold the ball for the three. And you kind of don't want to fall in between because that usually makes the bank a little more missable, right? So And powering up's just not there. And it's one thing that be able to do it, but is there a route to get there on the two? And I don't see it. So I keep things simple here at six to two. It's a smart shot. Now the way he landed, it's gonna be hard. But you gotta follow you. Oof, man. Now they're banking a little short, so if he hit it is makeable with a high ball. But you kinda gotta smooth it a little bit. If you hit it hard, I think it's hard to predict it going in. You gotta hit it light. Yeah, like that where it'll grab on you real nice. If you hit it hard, it kind of hops, doesn't hold the line. Now really kind of one shot away from ending this match. If he shoots a three with that top English, comes two rails and gets nice and heavy on the five. The draw back to the six is not very difficult for these guys. So this is the shot, in my opinion. Oh, he drew it. Okay, didn't want to follow. So now getting on the six is going to be much more difficult. Maybe the angle was fooling me. Maybe it was a scratch if he followed the ball, but I thought he could get to the end rail and come two rails right at the five. All right, looks like he's, I don't know what he's doing on the left side of the five. Besides, if he wanted to pocket it, the lower left-hand corner here, he could get to the side rail, bottom rail, maybe back up for the six. Is he playing safe behind the eight here? Yeah, moving the. Trying to get behind the eight anyways. Moving the five, two rails up table. It's a pretty smart shot. Just kind of forgot to draw it much. Just need a little more draw there. And I wouldn't doubt that Jose takes on the long rail bank here. Trying to hold the ball up table for shape. And maybe a backdoor safety. The cut looks like, you know, the ball you want to shoot at is the cut. But really, I don't see position there. So... I think the long rail bank is really what he's supposed to shoot at here. Just a hair of right English is all you need. Pretty pretty full hit on the five, it looks like. Most players shoot at the bank. And unless he's going to pull the ball and maybe try to catch a piece of the six, I don't know what the route on the cue ball is for getting shape. A high ball looks like he may catch the nine off a couple rails. He may scratch right here where he's standing. We'll see. Oh, he hit it sweet. Is he going to go in between them? Oh, he caught a piece of the nine. Kind of developed a cue ball. And Jose's still fighting. Great shot there. Now he's thin on the six. <clears throat> so he's going to have to put a hair of English on this to avoid the 8-9. So it'll be top English with just a hair left. You don't want to spin the ball a bunch, just a, just a little bit to help the cue ball route. T 
he not shooting at this? He's gotta be shooting at this. Oh, the cue ball again. It's been the cue ball for Jose. Just unpredictable scratches here and there. And, you know, anytime again, you got to make a tough shot. The cue ball can't be exactly perfect. And I think it's been a, a bit of bad luck for Jose. We've seen some just unreal scratches in this match. And now Daniel's played great. Don't get me wrong. Nothing taken away from him. But could be a lot closer with a little more fortune, you think. Can't, can't lose focus, though, if you're Daniel. So Jose's going to look like he's going to suffer his first loss. But our runner-up from last year. Plugging along. I didn't want to speak too soon, but yeah, friendly handshake between the two fellas. Daniel Gamble from Hickory, North Carolina with the win. Jose, of course, the proprietor here at Strokers. He'll be back tomorrow. And so will we. Uh, we'll have another match on the stream. So for the APA and Jeremy Jones, thanks for tuning in. And stay tuned.